Hi, it's Tony Buck again, and here we come through the gate from my street to my little one-tenth of an acre. And right away, here's an old golden rain tree that I had, and I've kind of ringed it at the bottom to try and kill it, but they're hard to kill. And then I put these pieces of sticks up, and I said, why, why cut it down when I can use it as a structure? So I'm growing lima beans up it this year. It's the end of July, so I'm not sure how they'll do. And down here, this is a borage plant, self-seeded, uh, very edible, a nice green to eat. And back over there, I've planted some um, gourd plants, but they might not get enough sun. And I planted them a bit late, so we'll see how that goes. So as I say, it's only a tenth of an acre, and down over here, I've planted a uh, Japanese banana. I normally don't like non-natives, but uh, certain ones we do have to use because they're useful. And this won't become invasive because it'll die off from frost. And uh, the reason I planted it was because uh, it's a mind blower. When it gets uh, 10 feet high, the kids love to see it. They love to see the big leaves, and so do I. And it'll die back each year. I've never grown it before, but that's what I understand. And over here, um, I've planted sunchoke, or Jerusalem artichoke, some people call them. And that'll be a good harvest in the fall. Down at the bottom, there'll be some nice roots to eat. I'll harvest half of them and make soups and who knows what else. So this is what I call my little alleyway here, alongside my house between myself and my neighbor. And there's an apple tree. I uh, didn't produce many this year, but it did last year. Only small. I don't want too many fruits from an apple like that size. Um, and over here, this year I planted a, um, a hardy kiwi. I think this one is self-pollinating. I hope so. Um, this is literally, it was this high in May. And then it went up this bamboo pole. And I put this kind of metal structure up there. And it's already growing along there. So I'm hoping to get some hardy kiwis in a few years. Just tucking stuff here and there into all kinds of corners. Here's a Granny Smith apple, still very young. I uh, don't expect too much of a yield from that. Another apple there. And um, there's a peach tree that's been there for 30 years. I inherited that from when I bought the house. It's a lovely peach tree. Unfortunately, between the squirrels and everybody else, I don't get too many peaches. Um, if I really needed to eat that, I would put net, netting on it to stop the critters from getting them. Over in this corner, I've planted um, a leek bed. I planted this back in April. It's now the end of July, like I said. That'll be a nice leek bed for the winter. They can stay in, this is the Philadelphia area, they can stay in all winter and I pull them out one a week and have leek soup once a week so then they don't even have to come into the house over in the corner there is a fig uh, it doesn't produce figs it's still fairly young but it's not getting enough sun I thought that it would be nice and sheltered which it is because this is south facing the sun comes in here but it doesn't get enough sun in summer so I'm gonna have to move that in the fall when it goes dormant I'll move it over in this little bed there's um, a parsley plant which I use a lot of when I cook. And I planted um, some Chinese cabbage just yesterday and some kale and some, oh, there's a, an old Swiss chard plant. There's a few cucumber things. There's some self-seeded potatoes there. But I'll fill that up. That'll be like a winter bed full of greens by the time I finished. Let's move into the garden. Over here is one of my cages that I make. By the way, most of the things in the garden are on my YouTube channel, Tony Fix It. Um, I use these cages to start seed plants so the squirrels don't dig up the seeds. I'm just starting some winter squash there in July because I don't really want to see those until October. They keep better through the winter then. Over here I'm experimenting with the... Uh, oh, this is my uh, solar soil sterilizer. That's on the on the my channel, my YouTube channel too, and I built this pergola here 
to support the the grapevine, not so much to uh, not so much to grow grapes, but although they're growing very well this year, uh, but really to create some shade somewhere to sit in summer. So that's nice right there. Um, over here we got some garden beds, uh, a couple of self-seeded tomatoes. I just left them to see what happened, and then I planted lima beans here. First time this year for me. I had lots of seeds left over, so I've planted uh, lima beans. I put sort of put this little structure in place. I'm not sure how that will do. We had rain overnight, so my my water comes from the gutter on my house to this big garbage can hidden behind the tree a little bit that's full of water then it overflows into this old uh, tub I bought I was gonna put this tub in the ground and use it as a, um, a pond but I never got to that because I just left it there and it's so easy to water the plants just throw a five gallon bucket in there and toss it over the plants this is what I call my perennial bed um, there's some these are walking they call them walking, um, what do they call them, Egyptian, I think it is, or walking onions. They fall over and then they reseed themselves, so they kind of move. There's the, there's the little seed end on the end of the onion, and they reseed themselves. And over there is a couple of herbals, like uh, oregano or oregano, different kinds. Um, I grew garlic in here this year, and there's a, a little tomato tower, I call it. That I make. Um, I've had to put netting on that because the catbird loves to pop those tomatoes. Um, there's some struggling green peppers over there this year and a few other things growing in that bed. This is, a, this is my mint bed or mint mess bed you could call it. It's just mint. Various mints which I use. Whenever I boil potatoes now I always put mint in the water, fresh mint it really makes the potatoes taste great and uh, over here is a what looks like a very busy bed and it is um, there's some French sorrel there there's uh, this is a sunflower I planted there's a few of those let's see what else we've got going on here this is uh, oh, those of you who know this is a sweet potato vine so this bed is full of sweet potatoes there's some self-seeded Chinese cabbage there from last year which I'll be eating and uh, so and then and then it looks very weedy but it's not <clears throat> this is what the weed is actually that's called purslane which is a very edible salad or you can cook it it's one of the plants with the highest levels of, of omega fatty 3 acid check out my uh, purslane harvesting video on the channel, on the Tony Fix It channel. Uh, over here, cucumbers going over already at the end of July. I had a very good crop. They're, uh, they need to be pulled. And down there, there was, what did I grow? I grew some potatoes in there this year. Right now, I've seeded it with, with bush string beans. They'll come up for the fall. We have a very nice harvest in the fall. This is a little rocky outcrop among the weeds here, around the partly the mint bed. I put some rocks in the garden to try and create habitat for for the brown snake. I didn't see one this year, but they are around. And if he can live in there, they eat slugs. The brown snake eats slugs. There's some water for him to drink. So I'm hoping to attract some brown snakes into my garden so they'll take care of the slug problem, which is uh, when it's very rainy like this year, it's a problem. Over here uh, some self-seeded tomatoes. Um, there's some uh, crinkly cabbage. I've forgotten the name of it. So um, what are these funny things? These look like corn plants but actually that's ginger. I buy organic ginger from the health food store, cut it up and plant it and that will be a lot of ginger for me. Another parsley plant in the corner. Another uh, cucumber stand separated off from the other one. It's good to plant stuff different places around the garden, the same plant. Don't put it all in one place because then it, it, you've got more chance of it growing. This is an untidy looking uh, patch here but to the initiated we know 
This is potatoes. The whole thing is full of potatoes. Uh, they're dying back, so they're ready to dig out. There's a row of sunflowers back there on the fence, just for fun. They'll come up and wow the kids as they pass by the alley there, as people walk by. And down in there there's some uh, Welsh onions. Some smaller onions just growing there. Here's the uh, here's the seed pod from a from a leak from last year. Look at that! Isn't that amazing? I always think it's amazing. So let's see what else we got. There's um, a self-seeded peach there, and that's a self seed Well, those peaches I moved over there. I'm just trying to. They say you can grow a, a a stone tree from a stone, like a peach tree without grafting it. So I'm doing an experiment. I'm growing that peach tree from a stone. I'll see if I get any fruit just uh, from my own knowledge base, really. As we go over here, this was, uh, I just emptied this compost heap. There's one. And uh, of course this machine here, what we call a machine, it's, uh, it's my compost sieve. There's more explanations of that on my YouTube channel. You just shake it like this and it sieves all the compost into a nice fine um, substance, you know. And so here's the beginning of another compost heap. Here's some uh, more herbals. What's this? Oh! <clears throat> yeah, lovely. Lemon balm. Lemon balm is sort of spreading through there. I'm going to have to pull it out, some of it. And in this cage, because i got squirrel problems, uh, I planted peanuts this year. You see that? Peanuts. I've never planted them before. Let's see how they do. They're looking good so far. There's some echinacea over there. And as I said, the, these peach trees, we'll see how they do. There's some cherry tomatoes just growing on the fence. I do that for the kids so that when they pass by, they can, they can grab a cherry tomato. What's over here? Oh uh, well, when I when I do my compost, uh, then I I put it in a tub like this. What we call black gold. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. That's sieved compost. So that's about it. Lots of stuff going on. Um, lots of little niches. Nothing uh, too amazing. You can do this yourself. Just plop stuff in, you know, there's there's 30 or 40 food plants in here and there's no reason others can't do this. It doesn't look really sharp, it's not twee as we said in England, it's not very uh, pretty, but it is productive and I'm more interested in that myself. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. See ya!